never going to be an overnight thing. You need to, you know, play the long game and then you slowly build up these routines and actually understand what your body needs. That's a key one nowadays. I know when my body just needs to, to relax or if you know, I might be overdoing things, just go, okay, it's okay just to take it easy and saying no to things as well. It's being able to look after yourself, something I've definitely learned. Hey guys, it's Toby Morrison from CFS Health. And on the other end, we have Blake Thompson. Hey, Blake. Toby, how are you going? Good, mate. I'm so stoked to have you on and I'm just so bloody proud of you. The people who are going to be watching this are just going to be absolutely gobsmacked, amazed and inspired. And we haven't seen your face in eight years or something. <laughs> I don't even know how we reconnected. That's right. Someone told me to get LinkedIn and so I did. And, and then your name popped up and I was like, oh my God, Blake Thompson. And, and I messaged you just to see how you were doing because I love to check up on past clients who have done our program and you're like yeah going well like I'm doing accounting at university and lined up a job and I'm like holy shit you were a teenager <laughs> when I met you and you know you were barely living really stoked to have you on mate so thank you and for anyone who doesn't know Blake went through chronic fatigue syndrome as a teenager you came and saw me at my clinic in Melbourne way 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 before the online recovery program was started and I kind of just want to share your journey of what you went through and um, you look so well now you just look yeah. so healthy and strong and we were just talking off air before how you're doing one to two kilometer ocean swims now and you're just fit and healthy and it's pretty incredible because when you came to see me you could barely get into my office yeah pretty much even actually waking up to go yeah. see you was yeah. the <laughs> hardest thing i think we worked together for a year and a half maybe mm-hmm yeah, I would say about that, probably yeah, saying 15, probably I was. So good, yeah. what, eight, nine years ago. Eight, nine years ago. And um, you're right, it was a real struggle to even get you there sometimes. And your mum and I would be on the phone and it was tough. It was a tough journey. And I remember, yeah, having so many conversations with your mum because she was just so worried about you and just didn't know how to get you going. And, and you didn't, you were just struggling. You couldn't even think yeah. about getting going because you were just in the bloody mix of the nightmare basically but tell us a little bit about before you got sick what were you like you were super sporty I know you're a football player yeah cricket player. yeah so I was a young kid just like a typical young boy just footy cricket really struggled to just sit down in a way I always loved doing things sport running around that's just what I love so when I did have chronic fatigue that just changed who I was and all sort of my passions and loves just went away really. So that was when I was probably 12, 13, just started high school, got a virus, never really recovered from it. And then the next eight you know, years was very different to how I was when I was back 12 or so. I remember, I don't know if you remember <laughs> I went and watched you play. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. That was like the first, second game back. We had a whole plan to actually get me back playing footy. That was like one of the goals. And it was just playing little five minutes on and off for a quarter or something and slowly built up. Yeah, I remember that. Back then when it was more local, I could, I'd loved going to watch my clients achieve their goals. And yeah, I remember going to that football game and it was a big deal. It was something that we were working towards for a long time and you were able to do it. I actually think you kicked a couple of goals from memory but you're an athlete like you're a naturally skilled athlete and when everything was easy for you naturally you're a good football player good cricket player sport was your life and then to not have that would have been such a hard thing to deal with em emotionally and mentally and I think as a teenager as well you're probably just sitting there with all this emotion you don't know how to deal with it yeah and then the thing with sport like what comes with the social side of things so that completely went and then my schooling that was just non-existent really so I was living this ideal life love going to school and all that and then all that was taken away and you're sort of just in your own bubble world I wasn't really living life just life was living around me it was just a different world that I don't really know how I coped with it mm. yeah you came and saw me I remember you were going through a real hard time and you were young and coming to see me was basically your life in a way you're doing our program and coming every week and getting the right support and 
figuring out all the stuff that you're going through and doing the right things at the right time was a really big process. What was this journey like getting diagnosed? It was pretty hard back in Melbourne. It's hard for everyone in every country. People email us every week saying, either my doctor doesn't believe in me or my doctors did diagnose me, but he or she can't help me. What was it like for you? Was it a similar experience? Go to like doctors and all that. They may either say you're just tired or you need to do this and that. They give you all these medicines and you, you pretty much just go see anyone that you would have hope that would help you. But my sister, she had chronic fatigue as well, but then it was beyond the point where it's taking all these drugs every day, you know, silly amount, then you just wouldn't feel better. And then, yeah, yeah you'd go see anyone that would help, like you do some weird stuff, like the Chinese medicines and all this, <laughs> anything that would help. But it's hard to actually go see someone who, now they're very smart people, the doctors, but they don't actually know how you're feeling. Mm. So I think that was the thing with you, like similar background to actually talk to someone who knows how I feel was good because you go see a doctor, they go, I'll take this and then this will make you feel better. But it just it never worked. It didn't. No. So, mm. And I remember seeing your sister too. This is a whole nother story, but basically I was seeing both of you at the same time for a little mm. while too and helping Emma get back on track. And she's doing really well these days as well. You said that she's accounting as well and still with her boyfriend who used to come in when we used to work together, which is amazing, eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, it was a journey for your whole family. And I just remember it was so painful for your mum to go through. Like she was just your biggest support and cheerleader and, and basically helper. And it was a journey for her too, which we can talk about. You got diagnosed. You tried all the wacky things like most people do. You tried all the drugs. Yeah. What were the biggest symptoms that you struggled with? Yeah, so my sleep was terrible. It was more my body clock. So I was getting to sleep at probably seven o'clock in the morning and then i'd wake up probably five o'clock at, at night so there'll be days where i just wouldn't see the sun you know sleep was just all over the place so that was a key one that i really struggled with and then just felt like a zombie just no energy lethargic my head just fuzzed and yeah i struggled with that but yeah sleeping was really tough for me went through a lot of things to actually try to get my sleeping back on track. So taking sleeping pills, they weren't working. So it was just a mess. I know. You were a big mess. You are a big damn mess. I was like your mum's guider and I was basically trying to help you. But because you were so young and you also didn't really know what was going on, I was just like, all right, basically we need to reverse everything that chronic fatigue syndrome is doing to this boy. That's the framework for everyone. Chronic fatigue syndrome screws with his sleep. The quality of your sleep, your circadian rhythm, your gut health was really poor, I remember. Mm. Uh, screws with your mindset, the emotional well-being, because you can't live the life that you used to live. It's a devastating feeling to go from 14 years of just non-stop sport to then literally not being able to leave your bedroom. For a mm. young guy or for any age, it doesn't really matter. It's all relative. It's extremely painful and that just creates this secondary depression and anxiety which is so appropriate to feel when you're going through this you know what we had to do was reverse everything that chronic fatigue syndrome was creating and you were you lost a lot of muscle your strength went down completely so we basically had to recondition your body we had to restore your sleep um, which eventually restored your energy levels and helped you progress back to um, life but one of the things we did with your sleep do you remember do you remember what we did <sighs> No, I don't know. Like, tried so many things. I can't actually remember a lot yeah. of things because I was just there and my mum was just telling me what to do and I'll try to do it. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. I remember eventually what happened was you were so bad that I said, all right, he needs to come in twice a day. Do you remember yeah. that? We did twice a day for four weeks straight. And this was to get your circadian rhythm back in the right rhythm because basically, like you said, you were falling asleep at four or five or six a.m in the morning and then you would sleep all day and then you'd wake up and then you'd eat breakfast at 5 p.m you'd eat yeah. lunch at 11 p.m and I, I think you used to watch the soccer or the cricket and then you'd eat dinner at 2 or 3 a.m and so it was this terrible cycle so basically what I did you were still out of sleep during the day but I had to wake you up for breakfast 
if you had to have breakfast and come and see me and then we would do some like restorative stretching and restorative breathing and just relaxation mm -hmm. Sometimes we did some mindset work as well. And then you'd go home, you'd have a rest, then you'd have lunch, then you'd have a rest, and then you'd come back in the afternoon and see me again. And it was so hard for you at the start. And I think there was like two days where you just didn't come in. And I was like, Helen, yeah. you get him here. He needs to come here. <laughs> and you did. And it was so hard. I remember like there were days where you were so exhausted and tired, but it really reset your clock. It took a while. It didn't happen overnight. Like that was the start. Mm -hmm. And then it took probably another three to six months, but eventually we got you back to almost normal times. Like it wasn't perfect, but it was a hell of a lot better. And then it was like setting a routine. I know when the start, it was just like, mum would go get me a coffee and just deliver me a coffee in bed to help get me up. And now that's set a routine, get up, go get a coffee. It's just... Sleeping was just tough and then just, yeah, it was just a mess. So being able to just find that routine and then what I guess worked and then just having to actually get up was tough, but then obviously worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and you don't see it at the time. And I think that's the problem. You don't see the results straight away. Like you said, we worked together for a good year. And it wasn't until the latter end of that when you were back playing football and going back to school. And what we did basically is we created a, a baseline, which is your routine and structure that's appropriate for you in the moment, which was very little at the start and which was fine. And we built it up and it's just incredible, man. Like 15 months later, you were back at school, you were playing footy, you were seeing your mates, like you were just living your life again. But to see you catch up eight years later and see you're a man now and you're going to pursue a career in accounting and I know you're going to do so well at that too. It's, it's just really cool to see because there's so many kids out there um, who are young, who are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, teenagers and the mums. It's just yeah. so overwhelming and stressful to watch your kid go through this and I know my parents did too. And I think that's where we related on, where I really connected with your mum a lot. We built a great relationship and it's so inspiring and gives so much hope to people out there who are going through this, that it can get better and that it does get better, mm. but you have to do the work and the work sometimes doesn't give you the rewards and the chocolates straight away. No, it's not, it's never going to be an overnight thing. You need to, you know, play the long game and then you slowly build up these routines and actually understand what your body needs that's okay one nowadays i know when my body just needs to relax or if you know, i might be overdoing things just go okay it's okay just to take it easy and saying no to things as well it's being able to look after yourself something i've definitely learned also with the young people it's like with schooling as well so I think the key thing with me is just I barely went to school. Like when I did go to school, it was either for lunchtime, just catch up with my mum. That's what I meant to do. Yeah. Because yeah. you weren't going at all and you were so uh -uh. sick. And I said, look, we need to get him into a routine structure. And I said, Blake, what's the favorite part of school? You said, just seeing my mates. And I said, well, that's what we're doing. I remember writing a letter to your head coordinator and being like, hey, this is where Blake's at. This is what he's going to do. We're going to eventually get him back into class and stuff. But to start with, it's 30 minutes at lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll would just be go to class. I'll do no work at all. I'll yes. No responsibility, but I'll just be there catching up with my mates and all that. And then I look back of where I am now, being able to get to uni. So I've done the right thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's just there is actually a way to try find a career, and there is upside. Even though back back then it did seem like that there was no pathway. I even felt probably like that four years ago that, you know, I don't have any qualification, year 12 qualifications, always how am I actually going to do what I want to do? So to be able to see that pathway has been pretty amazing. I'm getting shivers down my spine. I don't know if you remember, <laughs> but I said to your mum, and your mum was so good, she took it on board really well, but I said to you as well, I'm like, I don't care about your school. Do you remember me saying that? Yeah, school... It didn't matter, but it was just, it's more to it than just, you know, the educational side of things. Yes, exactly. And, and so I said, I, I'd rather you be in class and not learn anything, but just be there for that one hour and build your capacity than not go at all and do what's appropriate for you. But 
I said to you, like, once you finish school and once you get better, there's always going to be a way around this, you know, whether you do a TAFE course first and then yeah. get into university. But like you said, it's so hard to see that future and see the chocolate reward at the end of the day when you're just doing the Groundhog Day. And you did the Groundhog Day. Like you used to come in, like I said, twice a day for four weeks. Then we'd do every third day, you'd come in and do your training with me. And it wasn't that fun, but at least you had something to look forward to each day. Something to get you out of bed and do that was appropriate. Routine. Yeah, routine that, you know, I was able to have instead of just wake up, eat and do nothing pretty much. Just having that routine and just forming good habits. Exactly. Was there a pivotal time where you started to notice a difference i don't know if you remember but back then we used to do i think it was six week trackers and so we'd track your progress <laughs> after six weeks was there any kind of moment in time where you're like oh i'm starting to get better and i'm starting to feel yeah better? i think with you it was probably getting back to footy i think that was the huge goal i had so not playing footy was so tough sort of had like a plan out so you know training with you and then I might just start training for a little bit, just like kicking the ball yeah. at training or something. So it was like this long plan that was tough because back when I was C, I was probably like, oh, I'm feeling okay, I'll just play and then bug myself out for the next week. So we had a plan. can't really remember, but it was just a train, build up that um, the strength and just in a way trust my own body that can do what I wanted to do. And then when I got back into playing footy, it was, five minutes on, five minutes off for a quarter or something like that. And then it was slowly building. It was a slow build, but geez, from where I was, not playing footy and then slowly getting back into it, it was, yeah, amazing. Yeah, and guys who are watching, there were times where Blake couldn't walk up the stairs of our clinic. It was a really cool progressional thing. And like you said, I think before you started seeing me, you would have the big games or have something really important that you'd go to and then you'd just go, oh, screw it, I'm just going to do it. And you'd go all in and then you'd be totally screwed and exhausted and in pain for a week or so. And so I remember actually, I'm having flashbacks. We Remember the running track we had and we'd stand at either end and we'd kick the football. And I would always make sure that you'd just do the right amount, not too much, not too little, but we'd stop before you'd be tired basically. Yeah, that was fun. And, and now I remember as you were getting progressing, then we'd add in handballs and jogging and you'd run around. We kind of mimic what it would be like to be playing football, but just on a graded level, basically on a scaled back level. And this is the problem where a lot of people face. They get so fixated on it has to be a set thing every single day. This is unfortunately what's happening in the world. At the moment people talk about graded exercise therapy and it doesn't work because it's not flexible enough. And there'd be weeks where you'd come in and we'd adapt depending on how you felt. So I don't know if you remember, but there'd be weeks where we wouldn't do anything other than restorative stretching. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes even we'd just be sitting in the office and we'd go through some goals or some mindset stuff. And that's important for everyone at home to know as well. You need to have a plan, but you need to have a flexible plan that is going to really suit you rather than just be so fixated on, on black and white. Was there any other things that really helped? I remember your nutrition got a lot. That took a little while for you to understand, I think. Because none of us got taught this. I didn't get taught this at yeah. school. Like no one talks about uh, nutrition and low GI and whole foods and protein. How much of that did make it made a difference for you? Yeah, and then just like setting a routine when to eat as well. Yeah. So wouldn't eat before I go to bed. So just having a set and just breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then see it still to this day, why not pass a certain time? I think that was key as well, because something that probably didn't help with my sleeping as well. If I'm you know, eating dinner just before I go to bed, that's not going to help. And then another thing with you is just like the goal setting, being able to see the progress that I was doing and even saying little things that I was able to achieve where probably in hindsight might not be able to see it in a way. Yeah, like you said, with your pen and paper, I was able to do five more push-ups or something like that and probably look at it and go, oh, okay. But then you just see the progress go, oh, this is actually working. Yeah. yeah. Just being able to see the progress that I was doing. And feel it too. Like you felt it. You could see it in your body. I remember your posture changed, your physical appearance mm -hmm. changed, but you're spot on about the food. And that was one of the things we fixed. And that's why I got you in twice a day because 
I said to Helen, your mum, I was like, his body needs to start to know what time of day it is. Because right now his body's so out of whack that his brain and body thinks that nighttime's daytime and daytime's nighttime, basically. And so we had to reverse that. And it took some time and you used to have naps throughout the day. But what we did is we shortened them and we made sure that they were no later than three o'clock in the afternoon. So they'd be between like 12 and three. And then that decreased, which then increased your nighttime sleep. You went to bed earlier. But to set your metabolism in the morning, lunchtime and dinner was a game changer for you. It was a game changer for all our clients. Even to this day, like we literally have a nutritional plan that everyone sticks to. And it's a little bit different for everyone, but it's got the same principles and ultimately we want to have sustained fuel in our system that kind of gets us going in the morning, but then also we can continue to add that fuel throughout the day to replenish and restore energy in the body. But yeah, that was cool. And then that reset your digestive system. It's pretty cool to think about on a scientific level because eventually what happens is your body was just processing at the wrong time. And so now you don't need to go to the toilet at 4 a.m. in the morning because that's when your body's digesting and it's replenishing and restoring. It's all routine. So going to the toilet, routine. If you think about it, it's all part of the same thing that we're working on, which is reversing everything that chronic fatigue syndrome created. And when we do that, we start to get results. And oh man, it's so cool. Anything else that's on your mind that you want to share? Like, you know, some epiphanies that you had along the way. I like the fact that you said it was a slow burn, like it wasn't an overnight thing. It was just showing up daily to do the baseline, the restorative stuff, the reconditioning stuff, and just having something to aim for, basically. Yeah, one thing I was probably thinking about it last week was what I learned about myself during that period, I think makes me far more resilient, makes me appreciate so many things more even just like seeing the sunshine because i missed a lot of that or just being able to socialize you so say you have a lot of young people that are going through this in the end all that hard work there is it's worth it and yeah with then my education there's hope in a way it might not look like it as you go you look at it and go this is never ending it won't get better but it will and in a way, I didn't go to school pretty much at all. Didn't get a qualification at high school. I had to go a long way around to get into uni. But then in the end, when I went for the job um, internship, they didn't ask about why Why is my um, schooling all messed up and around. So it doesn't define who you are, I guess. So good, dude. And I, I almost just wish people could see how bad you were because it's so hard to understand. When everyone's looking at you going, like, look at him, he's fit and healthy and you got fullness in your cheeks, which is a good sign of health. But, uh, no, and, and the glow. <laughs> <laughs> but man, you were grey when I saw you. You were a scrawny little kid and you were so weak. Your immune system was so low and shot and you used to get sick all the time with viruses and flus. And Yeah, so- I just wasn't living life really. I was just... When I'd have to go see you, there was times where, you know, you'd say I'd struggle up to walk up the stairs just because I was forced. My mum would drive me there and you know, I look back, can't remember a lot of things because I was just in that state where I was a mess. <laughs> you were, you were a real hard project in a good way though. Like I was just like, there's a lot of angles that we're going to go from here and help you. And especially when you're feeling so low and flat, it's just so hard to want to do anything. And like you said, it was a bit of a forced effort to start with by your mum to help get you started and it was probably four months of that effort of just like i don't want to be here i've got a headache your legs were so sore back then but something clicked you know it was four months six months i don't know when but maybe it was when emma was coming in too but something clicked and you started coming in for yourself Mm -hmm. you've almost realized it's up to me kind of thing but then it's not perfect it's not always going to be perfect but then you go back to what you know and go okay, this work, this time, let's just reset. It doesn't always have to be an upward slope. It's okay to feel shit. You just have to go, okay, this is what I need to do now. And just that understanding of what your body needs was probably my biggest takeaway as well from it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that was the thing back then, you know, there'd be weeks where you just do this. We were just maintaining And that was good. That's good. You know, you need to just maintain sometimes and then build and then maintain. 
just two questions to wrap this up, mate. And this is just brilliant, like so insightful and just giving me all those memories. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember going to that football game, your mum and your dad were there and your teammates were just so wrapped to have you back. Yeah. You hadn't lost anything. It took you three minutes and you got the ball in your arm, you're running, <laughs> you're kicking goals. And it was just really cool to see. For anyone who's struggling out there, they've tried everything. They're trying the doctors, they're trying the medication, they're trying the supplements, they're trying the hundred Chinese medicine balls that we've yeah. both taken. I did that as well. What would you say to someone who's looking at getting help through our program? They're a bit unsure, they're skeptical because they think it's another thing they've just got to try. What's the difference? between the program and doing all the other stuff that you tried, the outside things? What would you say to that? I think the key one for me was I was talking to someone who actually has experienced what I was going through. Mm. I think that was the key difference. Go, okay, this is what's happening to me. You see a doctor, they don't know how you actually feel and they go, take this, you'll feel better or you get... I really sick, all this, all that. I got told, oh, do you want to feel better? And that, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I remember I was in hospital one time. I'm not sure what she did, but she asked me like, oh, do you actually want to feel better? And this is the first time I actually cracked the, the shits with the person. How dare you say that to mm. me? I think the big difference probably with your program is I saw you and you know what? you've done that can be me i can actually get through all that i think that's the key thing i like for people going out out there with chronic fatigues it works in a way and the slow progress and then if you stick with it hopefully you get there yeah yeah and yeah look what you're doing now which is just incredible when we were talking on linkedin the other week i was like dude do you want to do an interview and i was just like man i need to get you on so inspiring and god yeah you just want to slap those people in the face when they say things like that to you. This is the problem, I think. And I went through the same thing. I had a psychologist say it to me when I was like 15, something like, are you feeling a little bit depressed? I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling depressed. I had my life back there. That's what I'm upset about. It's just so insensitive. And I think everyone wants to get better. It's just, but how do I get better is basically the mm-hmm. thing. And you're getting fed the different medications and supplements. And there's nothing wrong with that stuff if it helps you. But ultimately, if it's leaving you going around in circles, then if you can take anything away from this interview, it's all the stuff that you did yourself. Obviously, you got help, but it's the stuff that you're doing day to day, fixing your circadian rhythm, fixing your gut health, fixing your routine and structure. And yeah, man, it was a painful, slow journey, but look at you now. Yeah. The key thing, yeah, just setting that routine, knowing what works for you and understanding what works for you because... If you do have a setback, just falling back onto that, might get sick or you might not feel well, but then still being able to get up and just understanding what actually works for you. Yeah, yeah, man. That's the biggest thing we teach all those years later. That's the foundations. Mm -hmm. First set of modules in our program is the foundations of understanding the framework of the baseline theory and then applying it. And that's what we worked on with you, which is just so cool. People are watching this, they're sitting at home is probably a dude your age or even a mom or a father watching this gun. Wow, this is just so cool. Any kind of last words of wisdom for them? Yeah, like it's all, all work out in the end. There is light at the tunnel, even though that can be very hard to see. You can achieve your goals and it doesn't actually define who you are, I guess. You learn from it. It makes you far more resilient than what you are and and yeah so much grateful for what you actually have now Mm. yeah that's awesome thanks so much for joining just want to give you a big hug mate if i saw you like it's been so long i'm just so proud of the person you've become and who you're becoming and and also your own personal achievements of getting through university and then getting a job lined up in accounting and yeah man it's just really cool but more importantly you just look great and feel great and i think yeah the fact that you said to me at the start of the call, like you've been doing ocean swims, not even in wetsuit, you just go out in your speedo yeah. in the winter cold water and you just absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. And I was saying to that to you, I was just like, I wish I figured that out when I was sick because for my mental health as well, just being out there is just, yeah, un- unreal. I feel the body, it's great. But then for the mind, it's 
it's a nice calming place out there so i don't know what it is about the cold water scientifically all that but yeah something that i don't know i feel like geez if i was sick i would have loved to do that we'll have to do an ocean swim next time we see each other you'll probably be a bit ahead <laughs> of me i think it sounds like <laughs> you start calling you michael quim <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thanks so much for doing this interview. Yeah, just on behalf of everyone who is watching this right now and who um, is going to watch this in the future, just, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tobes. Thank you. And yeah, all the work you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, no, my pleasure, mate. All right, we'll catch up soon for that swim. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, sounds lovely to me. <laughs> and just a big shout out to all the parents out there who are going through this right now. I know it's tough hang in there do you want to say anything to the parents Blake yeah so I don't know my parents it hits them tougher because with my situation I was just so just unemotional and all that and then seeing my mum how invested she was in getting me yeah. back was pretty amazing and then I think she's loving it just seeing how Emma and I are going mum was amazing support so the sacrifices they give it's yeah, pretty amazing from being in that experience. One thing I said to your mum throughout working together, there was a period of time where she was almost too invested. You know what Helen's like. And yeah. like, Helen, you're probably going to watch this. Interview. I love you, Helen. You are an amazing mother. You are an incredible person. You already know that. But I think there was a time where I said to her, I'm like, leave him alone a little bit. You don't want to pressure him too much. He's doing all right. Take the pressure off him, just back off a little bit. And it feels counterintuitive. That just gives you space to step in for yourself more and take more autonomy and responsibility for yourself. And it's a fine balance. And I feel like your mum, she was so invested and she's just got so much love for you guys. And yeah, she's absolutely brilliant. So big shout out to Helen as well, just for all the love yeah. you gave Blake and Emma as well. And uh, yeah, oh, just a big shout out to all the parents out there who are maybe going through it pretty tough right now. Just know that, as you can see, it can get better and there has been many blessings along the way as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Blake. We'll speak to you soon. All right. Thank you, Toby. Thanks, mate. Good to see you. Bye. Hey, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. What was your takeaway, your insight from today's video? It's really helpful to actually write your learnings down. We seem to embed it better and it seems to help us move forwards with life. Here are three ways we can help you right now whenever you're ready. The first way is make sure you add yourself into our free information recovery group on Facebook. We'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really supportive, encouraging place. There's no negative venting. You can ask questions to other people. There's something like seven, 8,000 people in there right now. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, there's even more. So go over there right now. We share success stories. We share our latest free trainings that come to the public. And we always share upcoming information about upgrades inside our program. And also when we offer free webinars or free information nights that can further help you with your own recovery. The second way we can help you, which is one of my favorite, is through all our free trainings. We're going to leave a link in the description with our favorite free trainings that we know can help you start your recovery, whether that's through our baseline training, which will help you stop pushing and crashing, our three stages of recovery to figure out exactly where you're at and know what to do next, or my favorite, which is our guest panel workshop, which was actually exclusive for our members. It was so damn good that I actually asked them, can we share this to the public? They all said yes, all five of them. So thank you past members. They share their five recovery secrets and it's really powerful. There's tears, there's aha moments, there's real key insight and inspiration. And so whether you're a one out of 10 and you're really struggling right now, or whether you're further along in your recovery journey and you're integrating back into life, we have you covered. The third way we can help you is through our actual paid online recovery program, the mentorship recovery program. And if you are interested in getting proper help, a holistic comprehensive plan, professional coaching from the best coaches in the world, whether that's with mindset, movement, nutrition, restorative movement, reconditioning, 
integrating back into life, integrative medicine, baseline, structure, routine, accountability, all things health and life. Feel free to apply for the program today. All you need to do is click on the form, cfshealth.com slash form, fill out the short two to three minute form application and the team will be in touch with all the details that you need to know about the program via email. So make sure you check your spam folder for all the free trainings. If you've sent through an application, please be patient. My team are real people, okay? They're not robots. So if we don't get back to you within seconds or hours, it's okay. <laughs> we will get back to you. If you don't hear from the team within two to three days, that means that it's basically gone to spam or junk and it's gone missing. So please send a follow-up email to the team at info at cfshealth.com. If you have any questions, go check it out. But I would highly recommend adding yourself into the free group right now. Go click on that link in the description. Go download all the free trainings. Honestly, the whole reason why this whole thing started is because when I went through this myself, it was so painful and so excruciating that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. And some of these free trainings are so damn valuable. Back then, I would have paid thousands of dollars for. We've had so many comments and emails and posts saying, oh my God, the baseline training was a game changer for me. Toby, I've been doing this now for three months and I'm feeling so much better. My symptoms are decreasing. I've got more stamina. I've got more energy. I'm able to do more things. So, you know, whether you're learning from us and consuming our content through our free format, I'm so stoked. Whether that's in our paid program, I don't really care. Either way, all I want to make sure is that you are moving forwards. You are starting to really implement this work. And that's really what it's all about. Once we implement, we make change and we start to move forwards. Sending you a ton of love. Of course, feel free to consume as much of the YouTube videos as you like. There's so many really, really great ones, new and old. Sending you a ton of love and uh, speak to you very, very soon. All the best for now.